Okay, everybody, we're going to talk about electrical installation here for a minute. If you want to look, this is kind of a visual deal. We use uh, four square, I don't want to compete with anybody. We use four square electrical boxes, that's what these are. Um, they're perfect for us for several reasons. The two main ones are, you'll see these little screws on the front. Those are to attach a plaster ring. Okay, and plaster rings come from absolutely flat. For instance, if you had exposed blocks, and then they come, you know, quarter inch, three eighths, half inch, five eighths, three quarter, uh, maybe they end at three quarter, I'm not sure. But you can get different thicknesses, and the thickness you want to buy is the one that matches the thickness of the plaster you're going to apply. Okay, so what that does for us is it, it, doesn't, it doesn't leave any guesswork for where this block goes in and out. Okay, where it goes is to the edge of the block, right there. Yeah, this is a sample, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so it goes right to the edge of the block. Now, we want this box to be rigid. We don't want it moving around. We don't want it going in and out or back and forth or anything else. That's why we attach this two by four to the back. We screw through the box into the two by four. And then, Austin, <laughs> we run a screw in it. Let's put it someplace easy. <laughs> this is just, this, we're not wiring this building. This is only for your benefit demonstration okay um, so then we screw this down actually yeah let's go ahead and screw it down then the other I mentioned there's a couple of big advantages one was the plaster ring the other is that it's a four by four metal box meaning it's four inches high and so when the next course comes in and has mortar underneath it it will match the top of this box perfectly so that you can just go right over it with the next course. Okay, now we've got, you wanna hand me that little one right there? Just for demonstration purposes. So here it comes in, whatever it is. And it's, now remember, these have mortar under them, so this is all flat here. So here's the, the tricky part, except it's not that tricky, really. Um, this is Adobe, and so we have certain things that provide forgiveness. And one of the forgiveness things here is we'll put a little chunk of adobe in here, just enough to keep the mud from running out. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, although it could be, but something that just stops the mud. And then in this space, once we've got the wire running everything, we'll just throw broken chunks of adobe and mud in there and just fill it up just for the thermal mass. It's not a structural element because these are our structural elements and that's what the next block is going to sit on. Now, what about the wire? There's, there's a couple of different ways, well there's several different ways to wire, but typically it's either conduit or UF wire. UF wire is direct burial wire. It's what you would put underneath your driveway and cars would drive over. It it's, looks like Romex except the, it's gray instead of white and it's got a real thick, tough skin on it so that you can put it in a driveway. Um, so, whoops. Austin and I made this little demo model once before, so you can kind of see what happens with the UF wire. We, we have this box in here, and then somebody's going down here, around in the center of the wall, and, and cutting this little trench. Okay, you can cut this with a skill saw blade turned backwards, or a masonry blade, or a grinder, or a, you know, whatever. It doesn't have to be very deep because all you're putting in it is this flat wire, okay? So we do one on the outside, both sides, and then we do another one down the middle just so it'll chip out easily. You can chip it out with a chisel. I've actually got some little air chisels, you know, and you can knock that stuff out of there. And then the wire comes out of the box, and it's gonna go down in that trench like that and take off to the next box or wherever it's going. And you can then staple this down with electrical staples into the trench. Um, one of the beautiful things about this, of course, is that your electrical wire is buried in the center of the wall, 
If you have a 10 inch wall, it's five inches deep in dirt. If you have a 14 inch wall, it's seven inches deep in dirt. So it's never gonna catch fire. It's never gonna get hit with a nail. You know, it's real safe, okay? Now, in, in some jurisdictions, they, they require you to use conduit, okay? The EMT, the metal tubing, okay? With the metal tubing, the sweep is bigger coming out of the back here. It's fatter, you know, it's three quarters of an inch thick. So what we do with that, if this one was going to get conduit, we, would bring the, we wouldn't do that little trench here. We would bring the conduit out and we or the electrician would set it on top of this row and put it down with some little clamps, and screw it down, and around it goes to the next box or up the door buck for the light switch or wherever it's going. And then there's a guy on the brick saw cutting a bunch of blocks that have a one inch deep trench in them, okay, across this way. And then that just sets over the conduit. Okay, got it? No Question? mud, nothing, just... No what? No mud. Well, you're going to put another block on it. Oh, yeah, you're going to have, you're going to still have mortar in there. Yeah, it's just the same as, as always. But Would it be a bad idea to, to cut blocks lengthwise and, and lay your next course with a gap for the conduit? Uh, you could do that, but that would be a lot of cutting. You know, you're going to cut a whole bunch of blocks to an odd size. You're not just cutting them in half because you got to take out the inch for the conduit. You know, this is, this is better. You know, because you just got a guy over there just cutting, cutting these blocks, you know, making a one inch groove down the middle of a bunch of blocks, and then that pile is the one that you put over the, the conduit. Okay. Make sure that conduit's running down the middle of your block. And, not and make sure it's running down the middle. That's right. That's right. You can't let the wand conduit wander around if you got a guy cutting the trench in the middle, you know, but it's hard and it's straight and it's certainly possible. Um, and then the electrician with that situation, he's coming back later and running the wire through the conduit. If you do it this way, he's running the wire as you go. Okay. This is certainly cheaper and faster. The, your receptacles are all at the same height, uh, typically 12 inches off the floor. That is not a code. It's only a custom. You can put them in the floor. We did one house where they put them in the floor, which was just great because then we didn't have to mess with this at all. All we had to do was, you know, we ran the, the conduit, it was an earthen floor, so we laid it down and then just had to chisel up a couple of courses, put the conduit in, we were at the box, and then buried the stuff in the floor in the, in the earthen floor. And that was nice. Now, light switches are at 48 inches, and that is a code. Um, and so, let's say we're going to have, and light switches are almost always by a door. You know, you walk in the door, this one's going to swing out, obviously, because, <laughs> but typically in the swing and like this, and you reach over here and you hit the light switch. So you've got this wire coming over that's for the switch and the light, and you run it right up the, the center of the buck on the outside. And then when you get to 48 inches, you just stick it out here and the course comes up, you put your box on, put the wire in it. And then it needs to go to the light, okay? So it has to continue up. And this part's easy. And then you get to the lintel. There's a, there's a wooden beam that's gonna go, not in this case, because this is gonna be an arch, but in a typical house, there's gonna be a wooden lintel over this. So that wire at that point either has to go around the lintel or through the lintel, all right? One of the things that has, is, of increasing popularity, which is kind of a pain for us, are sconces. Because those lights are out in the middle of the wall somewhere. You know, they're up here. So typically in that case, what we do is we go all the way up and we go through the bond beam and then come back down to the sconce. Okay. And going through the bond beam is another, we'll mention that when we, again when we get to the bond beam, but if you've got penetrations going up, either for your electrical wire or plumbing vent pipes or whatever it is, you want to make sure you're reading your plans when you form up the bond beam, look at the plans, and then we just put a PVC sleeve in the bond beam before we pour so that the hole's already there. 
If we don't do that, then the electrician or the plumber has got a roto hammer out and drilling holes in the bond beam. If we think ahead and put the sleeves in, everything's hunky-dory. Uh, another thing about the electrical, again, planning ahead and working with your architect and, you know, where's, you look at the electrical plan and where's everything going to go, we can also build a chase in here somewhere, you know, just a four inch by four inch void in the wall and you get everything over there and you run it all up through the bond beam and then it takes off from there and goes wherever it needs to go across the ceiling joists or the roof rafters or whatever, depends what you got up here. But you can go up and then come down. And that's easier than going up to a sconce like this. But you can, it's not that tough, you know, especially if they'll work with us. The other problem we have, it's best if they'll work with us, you know, if they can do this as we go, and then it's done, you know, as we start stacking up the blocks. A lot of electricians don't want to be called over to do, you know, half a day's work and, and, and go somewhere else. So we have to get it all set up. And then in cities and you've got inspections and stuff like that, the inspector's got to see it, you know. So we have to get to that electrical course, put all the boxes in, run the wire up the buck, get everything so the inspector could come look at it. So sometimes we have to stop. But if you're out in the country and the electrician will work with you, you can go right behind him, you know, laying blocks. So it just kind of depends on your jurisdiction, you know, as to what, what order you have to go in or how to do it. And, and when you're uh, designing the house, uh, are you locating the panels in one particular area where you're starting those runs, like through a... Sure, sure. Wall? Yeah, you're going to, he's talking about the, the panel, you know, where all the breakers are and the electrics come in. That's typically in a garage or a closet or a utility room or something like that. So you got all those wires coming out of there. And this is a place where you might want to chase to get to it. You know, it just depends where it is. You know, it's coming in there, then it takes off. Maybe you need a chase to take it up and over there, you know, this sort of thing. One of the things, you know, everybody asks, what's it cost? One of the biggest cost savings things you can do on any house, earth block or not, is to plan ahead about the electrical and the plumbing. Um, in, in the first house that I, my own house that I built in Pagosa, I was thinking of that and it, it had a basement, a main floor, and then a master bedroom and bath upstairs. Okay. So all of those were on one end of the house. And so in the utility room in the basement, I had the panel and then I had a chase like a laundry chute that went up and everything went up there and in this corner of the basement was uh, the laundry room and right next to it was a bathroom and above that was the bathroom for the the main floor bedroom and right behind that was the kitchen and right above that was the bathroom for the master bath so i wasn't running copper pipe all over the house or pex pipe or whatever they were running at the time but everything was was right straight up and down and I cheated on that house and one hall wall I framed out of two by tens just because that's where all the electrical and plumbing was going up. And um, it made it real easy and saved a lot of money. You know, if you start, well, I want the bathroom over there, then, then you're running miles of pipe and wire and stuff like that. But, you know, you could, you could do better if you plan ahead and put them in a clump, you know. That's why kitchens frequently back up to bathrooms is just so you can have all that plumbing in one place. And here's a plaster ring. We've got a plaster ring on this one. Here you can see this. See it's mounted. This is for a half inch of interior plaster. So when the, when the plasters are working, that base coat comes out just not quite to the surface. And then when the guy puts the finish coat on, he should hear his trowel go ting, ting, you know, across that plaster ring. And this makes it real easy for the electrician because his, he can put his receptacles right where they belong on these screws. Doesn't have to put a bunch of washers in there to fur it out or anything like that. It's right where it belongs. And then the, the, the cover plate, boom, goes right against the wall. Everything's real crisp and clean. The box is flush to the edge of the brick. Just that way there's no guesswork, you know, about this kind of stuff. It's just right there. If it's exposed bricks, the, the plaster ring is flat.
It's just dead flat. It doesn't protrude at all. So you're still going to put a cover plate that's going to cover it, but you can leave your exposed, exposed box.